I think they stated very much so. They know the strength of Samuel, and Cloud9 quickly answers back with that Libra ban, saying that these are the picks we don't want to have to deal with. I do like to see the Finn first pick, though. This is really a great character to build a comp around. All right, and Rome Adagio, they're going to build around on the Cloud9 side. Yeah, most likely it will be hard uh, playing Adagio up in that lane. One thing here, you have that buff, you have that hard deck who tends to you know rotate down, rotate with his entire team, and then you have the slow fit on the other side. Cloud9 is going to make as much of it as they can in that early game. Interesting, Fuji, to see Lance coming out for top. Yeah, I mean, we talked about how important he can be for the Phoenix team, especially for Reborn on Rex. So them taking it away from him is a pretty big deal. And I like the Adagio and I like the Lance because you don't exactly know where they're going to yeah. end up. They could go one yep. way or the other, lane, jungle, roam, we're going to find out. But I like the Sky pick too. She's rarely mobile. She can get around this Lance, get to the Adagio if she would like. The curious third pick of those going to let us know where the sky ends up. And with the Celeste, I think this is going to be a sky jungle and a Celeste on starting all over. I feel like Taka is going to come out for Cloud9 right now. Um, and it plays like a pivotal role for them because they do have the opportunity where you can dive deep into like all, all these squishies. Like um, you have Sky, you have Celeste. But one thing that they do have to worry about is their early game. What are they going to do in that early game? Hashtag Rome is right. Swap heroes. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm so glad that was my first one. <laughs> that was your first one. All right. Any final thoughts, Fuji? I think this talk is going to wreck some havoc on yeah. Reborn. They're going to have to be very careful about the early game. They cannot yeah, let this get out of control or Cloud9 will take it with ease. It is the Cloud9 debut. Let's see how they do with the call. It's Action Jackson and Humanist. Thank you very much. Playoff Beard. Humanist, I'm on a Cloud9 every time I'm up here with you. But oh, I now know, we've buddy. actually got Cloud9 on the fold. It's going to be awesome. I'm sure these guys are feeling great about recently being acquired by them. Also, you got to wonder if there's some pressure here. They want to perform well for the organization that just picked them up. Team Solomid did great with that pressure back in winter. Are they going to have the same kind of performance? Let's hop onto the Halcyon fold and find out. Humanist. First thing I want to talk to you about here is actually Joseph getting Taka. I'm surprised this was allowed by Reborn. This is a hero Joseph is so well known for. He is incredibly well known, but Phoenix coming into this draft, they had to have known that this was a good chance it would go through. And so I'd expect to see Xenotech getting into the weapon sky. It actually deals with Taka pretty well if you have to get into those one-on-one -on -one matchups. I do prefer Phoenix Reborn's draft coming into this overall, but like you said, that's a huge power pick for Cloud9. So, of course, on the flip side, you've got Reborn having starting all over on Celeste, and I think that's something we've got to pay attention to as well. He's been making a case for it being his signature hero recently, performing very well on it. In the Phoenix uh, sister versus sister matchup that we saw where they were playing up against Rain, it was an important pickup. We've seen uh, some other teams like Hammers using a lot of Celeste. It seems to be very popular in the current meta. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, Celeste is in such an incredible place right now, and you have to have a bit of fear if you're not snowballing the game, if you're not taking advantage early, because as you get into that late game, Celeste can just absolutely take over fights. What do you feel about Hardek picking up the Adagio here? I'm actually somewhat surprised, although Finn is a very versatile pick for Phoenix, that they let it through, knowing that Hardek has had very historically good performances on the hero, and it's so strong right now. Well, I mean, I, the thing is, I think it's picked up because it is incredibly strong, but from my perspective, I don't think it's one of Hardek's strongest heroes. I think he performs on quite a few others incredibly well, but he can make it work here just because Adagio does have a kit that's incredibly powerful. All right, Lost Boy Toph has spotted out Rekt and Xenotech making their move up towards the lane. So this shove is going to be shut down a little bit. Hardik can't keep the pressure going. Xenotech looking for some harassment. It doesn't find a lot of that forward barrage. Some damage onto Lost Boy can be enough to yield anything, though. Joseph, in the meanwhile, left to his own devices in the jungle. He's farming up, doing a good job picking up some early items. Two light armors is going to be the priority. You see he's actually found Xenotech, actually found all three members of Phoenix Reborn here. Joseph needs to be careful, but he's going in one Joseph. versus three, and he gets away without much of a scratch, to be honest. I mean, that's Joseph in a nutshell. Joseph, that's Joseph in a box right there. He's moving in aggressively. Yeah, he really is, and now he's got some backup from his team. He's going to be going even more hard, starting all over. Look at that annihilated first blood for Cloud9 as they have just been picked up by the Zorg. That's going to be a great boost in the morale. Wrecked, got to be careful here. Moving back towards this turret, trying to escape, but Hardek has the damage. Surely one more attack will be enough. He actually cancels the basic, but goes back got in, him. takes a turret shot for his trouble, but two kills already on the Cloud9. Wow, oh, they are on cloud nine right now after that early engage. Joseph, he had his key stacks up, and there is so much damage coming out of that. He makes the call, Hardik says, I'm rotating down, and they just fought, collapsed together perfectly.
Yeah, very nice stuff coming up from Cloud9. You can see the synergy that was talked about in the interview very evidently here. They've played together for so long, the rotations are on point. Hardek does need to be careful right now, though, as Rekt and Xenotech start to make their way in. He should be able to get out of there, no problem. Lost Boy nearby to back him up, and Hardek picking up some items. Yeah, Hardik gonna make his rotation down to the shop. Rek moves over to the right, Mustache Bush. Just gonna go ahead and make sure no one rotates up, but they found each other. Yeah, Joseph wants to get some damage down. Does find a decent chunk on his Xenotech, but they gotta be careful. They're very far towards the turret here, and with those four barrages and Heliogenesis, there's a lot of potential for Phoenix Reborn to poke back a little bit. Joseph, keeping up the pressure. He actually wants to maybe go for these back camps. Doesn't look like he's going to find that one, though. Should find some good damage on the Wrecked. One versus two right now. Joseph making a case for that Taka signature, man. Very strong stuff. A lot of the Ford Barrage actually missed there. Joseph dodging out that Quibble. Hardek coming down to back up Lost Boy. Is it going to be enough, though? Ford Barrage times out. Hardek can't pick up the kill, but Joseph and Toph stay alive. Nice rotation from Cloud9. Few players make me smile as much as Joseph. He gets into these situations two on one. He realizes, okay, I am the Taka, I have the strength, I have Kitan, I have Kaku if I get into a bad place, and he just abuses that power so well in the early game here. Xenotech is quite deep right now into Cloud9 territory. Gotta be careful if Joseph may be going for him. Can Joseph pick up the camp? I'm not sure on colorblind, but Xenotech, Xenotech got that one. is gonna be running down towards yeah, those you, back camps. He has already picked up a decent amount of gold from this invade, but you can see on the flip side, there's no assistance coming from Phoenix Reborn. They're just comfortable to let Xenotech die for that trade. I mean, it was well, close to worth it. They, and, and they moved down. They actually took the, the mids and the forwards there. So an interesting rotation from Reborn. Hardik maybe in a dangerous place. He is, but look at the damage he's doing. He's starting all over. If he had a flare, he, oh! a fish, he actually picks up the kill. Hardik one versus two gets starting all over down. He's looking for Wrecked as well, but Wrecked too high on those base health and armor numbers to really suffer too much. Cloud9, they haven't lost a single death yet. Hardik, forgive me for calling out your Adagio there earlier. 3-0, and oh, man. I mean, he is making it work right now. I, you know, one of the things is I do think that he plays a couple other, like his Sky, his Ringo. Like, those are the ones I really think of Hardik dominating on. But he's done a great job on the Adagio. And what's really cool is he can choose at any moment to buff himself or this Taka, which is, it opens up a lot of options. Oh, look at this. Xenotech going to be the main focus, but he does dodge behind Rek. Rek doing a good job of body blocking for him there. You see Joseph, when he has that heal buff up onto him, can actually get in position to make it very easy for Hardak to hit the burning targets because you're actually getting that heal debuff on uh, on someone who's in stealth, right? So very nice synergy there on the lineup of Cloud9. They're certainly doing a good job of keeping up the pressure here. Yeah, just those cheeky little plays and uh, making it work incredibly well. I think C9, this is a team that, of course, they're going to be trying to communicate as best as possible, but I think Rome kind of touched on it in the analysis. This is, they can play almost without talking. Like, the synergy is there. They just make these plays together, and it looks effortless. We can literally see them talking very little in the bottom right. They're, they're not doing a lot of it. They just don't need to at this point. Maybe think when things heat up a little bit, it'll be different. Joseph picking up, I believe, that jungle camp. Yes. He's going to be able to back away, starting all over, though, in the lane. Look at the damage coming out of Hardek. Wow. Just able to snipe him down with that obscene basic attack range. Now Xenotech could be in a bad spot. Joseph wants a little bit more here. Polite Company keeping him up for a while. Joseph going for that camp as well. Toff isn't going to be in a position to help him get the kill, but still great pressure out of Joseph and Cloud9. And, and Hardak choosing to let loose the ultimate just to push this wave out super quick. It's a really uh, bold strategical decision there. Yeah, it's they might be able to find the turret though. You can see them doing so much damage already. That's one on the board for Cloud9. Reborn struggling. Hardak does get pulled in, walks right into the core collapse. He could be in a bad position to heal, keeping up just barely. Not going to be enough though. Now Joseph low on energy. Can he find anything here? Looks like Cloud9 they're going to do the smart thing back away. Toph could be the sacrificial lamb to help Joseph get out of here, though. Joseph, I could see he was thinking about going back in Humanist, but he just doesn't have the energy He for wanted it. it, but the correct decision just not to move in there. But part of the problem was he, he was low on energy. And the other thing, Lost Boy was not quite in range to get a good fountain off. I think it hit one tick on the fountain onto Hardik. If he gets two, they maybe can turn that fight around, but just too much damage output out of Phoenix Reborn there. Reborn doing a good job of not losing their composure. You can see in the replay here, it all started with this great hook, though. Yeah, that forced to cord in exactly what they need. And you see Hardik, he gets one tick on that fountain, and now it's on cooldown. Lost Boy, he's just kind of left to his own devices. And Joseph, he has to make the decision. Do I go in? Do I try to make a play? At this point, it's just too little too late. And Lost Boy, he's going to get chunked down. Stunts come out. There's the kill. 
All right, so back onto the live action here. You can see C9 not perturbed by that fight. They are pushing out quite deep, starting to find those scout traps on the side of Reborn's map. I think vision is going to be key here for Cloud9, Humanist. Absolutely. No, it's, it's key for both of these teams. When you have the Taka, he has to know, can I dip into this bush? Can I face check this bush? If I'm invisible, is it going to work out for me? Do I have Whoa! the advantage? Forced to cord. That lands on the two Hardek with the reflex block, though. Joseph diving onto the back line does find some good damage onto starting all over. But is the pressure going to keep going? Joseph looking for a little bit more with that Kai-10. Standing on the front lines. Doesn't have enough to keep on going, though. Reborn will disengage. They weren't able to find the steal, though. I think Joseph, he didn't have the, the damage output to kill that Celeste there, but he completely caused a disengage out of Phoenix Reborn by diving onto the back line. That hook was actually really good. It set up Reborn to potentially win that fight, but it looked like it just got too chaotic for Reborn. They could cancel off that engage, and really nicely done by Joseph. All right, talk to me about builds, Humanist. Xenotech going for the weapon power has a breaking point already. Lots of armor, too. Do you like Weapon Sky in this matchup? Yeah, definitely. I think I, I mentioned it earlier, but if you're going to get into a one-on-one -on -one with a Taka, right? If you're not landing forward barrage, you lost, right? So he's, he has the ability when you get into this weapon path, he can trade basic attacks, he can still throw the forward barrage, and he will get those breaking point stacks off of that. Yeah, that is a very good point. Something, uh, of course, these top level players do take into consideration when going for their builds is exactly what they need to deal with from their opponents. Xenotech is looking to go towards some crit after this, of course. Forward Barrage being able to crit can really make it so it chunks people down, even when you are using that versus your basics. Exactly. And the way Reborn have been playing this composition, they're letting Rekt look for a good Force Accord, of which he's been landing them consistently. You land that into the combo with a Core Collapse coming out of Celeste, into a Quibble that's a lot of uh, CC, and the damage to come out of Xenotech to follow. All right, so Cloud9 now moving towards the lane, just going for the push. Crucible not necessarily needed there. Rekt did not land the Force Accord, but still popped by Toph. Cloud9, I feel like it's going to be very hard for them to siege here. Are they just looking for some pressure to maybe take jungle here? Yes, I think they're they're looking for whatever opening they can get, but you have to just start applying the pressure as they did. And this is a moment with Forced Accord on cooldown where they can potentially look for an engage. All right, Xenotech definitely going for some poke here as well. Heliogenesis over the wall finds a bit of damage onto Joseph, not enough to really secure anything. And with the camp stolen away, Cloud9 feeling pretty happy just to back away. They are sitting at a 2,000 gold lead. Reborn definitely struggling, but... If C9 can't find too many fights soon, the scaling out of Reborn could be very scary. Joseph doesn't want that to happen. Already looking for maybe a fight here. Death from above, zoning C9 from retreating. But to be honest, I don't think they mind too much. No, they don't mind too much. And I think you are uh, right on track there when you say that uh, Reborn are going to scale incredibly well. It's this Celeste, yeah, maybe she's not getting the same CS in lane. Maybe uh, she's a little bit behind in her item progression, maybe a level behind. But as you get uh, later into this game, she will be able to control these fights. If it talk a Kakus, you're just going to throw that Helio down. You're going to reveal, you're going to find that AoE damage, and it's devastating. Absolutely. You can see Hardek right now split from his team, just farming in the lane. But he knows he's relatively safe so long as he's good with his reflex block. You can see very confident play coming out of the members of Cloud9 right now. Goldmine stacking up quite slowly. Still got a while to go, slightly over 25%. Joseph wants kills instead, though. Looking for Wrecked right now. That's a lot of damage. Wrecked. Can he get out of here? The fountain not going to be enough. Cloud9 find their sixth kill of the game actual just wonderful plays out of Cloud9. A lot of times you're going to say, all right, well, you want to kill the Sky, you want to kill the Celeste, but if Ben is standing that far forward, you go ahead, you engage on him. He didn't have boots ready, had to self-fountain. So now that's on cooldown as well. Cloud9, perfect play there. Very much so, and that bought them the time for this gold mine to stack up most of the remainder of the way. Cloud9 looking to pick up yet another one and just extend this gold lead again and again. Oh, Solar Storm! Oh! It steals it! Reborn picking up a little something for their efforts, starting all over. Beautiful play. That, starting all over, I, I think he's like 13 years old. This guy is one of the most confident players that I think we have in the scene. He's actually. Kind of, kind of, I would be fearful to be playing up against him right now. Oh, absolutely. And normally I'm not that scared of 13-year-olds. So that's saying something. <laughs> well, that's not entirely true, Jackson. But it's what okay. do you mean that's not entirely true? You were pretty true. scared of that kid on the street earlier. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. In any case, let's get back into the let's action get back here. back in the action. Not talk about my, uh, my terrifying experience. That'll be for the podcast later. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, Cloud9, I mean, they have the advantage that they've built up. They need to hold on to this, though. They need to stay in the lead. The moment this, that this starts to even out as far as net worth, levels, and item progression, I really think it tilts towards Reborn's uh, composition. 
Yeah, I've got to agree with you. Xenotech is finding a little bit of these back camps. That's the route coming across. So Xenotech going to be the main target here. Hardik on the front line. Joseph not really able to get in until very late into this fight. You can see already chunked quite low. C9 need to disengage right now. Thankfully, there's not really enough damage or enough chase potential on Reborn for them to capitalize here unless they go for it uh, over a longer period of time. Joseph is uh, really impressing me. Obviously, we talked about he is the playmaker on this team often, but he's diving onto Xenotech and applying Atlas in the beginning of these fights, and right now, this is going to oh! be such a good tool. That was such a good root out of Lost Boy Toph. Just landing on the tip, starting all over, going to be going down. Hardik finding those basic attacks. Now, Joseph wants Xenotech. You can see the boots popped. Toph trying to get in here. Joseph looking for that x to cool down, but he can't quite find it. Has he finally gone too deep? It doesn't look like it. Fountain out of Toph is going to get Joseph out of there. Cloud Cloud9, just relentless aggression. All calculated at the end of the day. You gotta imagine for these guys. The thing is, Joseph, Lost Boy, they're gonna move in here, and as long as Joseph knows that that, that fountain is ready, he can make those aggressive plays. Yeah, and you see it right here. The communication is perfect. He knows that he can afford to do this. Yeah, Hardik just targeting onto starting all over. They need to take that Celeste out early, exactly what they did. Now Joseph, he smells blood, he wants Xenotech, only finds Wreck, and he realizes, okay, this is where I have to get out or I'm definitely gonna go down. Fountain comes out, keeps him alive. You know, I've said this before during the Evil Eight Humanist, Joseph, when he's playing well, just does not die, regardless of what's happening elsewhere on the map for his team. You can see it here, 1-0 and 3. Even Hardek and Lost Boy have died once, right? Reborn uh, have been able to pick that up. In, in that same breath, I think though, it's important to mention that a lot of times he's doing solo plays. But he's outplaying people one-on-one, one-on-two. -on -one, one -on but in this case, like it was definitely a team effort because he's only making that dive, he's only doing those aggressive plays if he knows the Toph is holding that fountain for him. Yeah, it's a very, very good point. Right now, Cloud9, they picked up another gold mine. Kraken, of course, spawning soon means that they just want to get that whilst it's available and then maybe push up the lane so they can rotate back. They haven't picked up the second turret yet, though, so they've got to go through this. If they want to go any further, you can see Hardik getting some poke down. Yeah, Xenotech holding on to an infusion right now. These properly timed infusions make a big difference in the sub fights. Yeah, infusions do so much work for you. Of course, even the defensive stats I think are overlooked sometimes, but they can help so much. It's like picking up a few more items. Force to cord, not going to land. Joseph, stand quite calm though, not using that as the opportunity, not using that as a green light to just jump in. Not a green light to go there. Now Jackson, I, I think it's safe to say, and you know, I could be wrong on this, but whatever teams are going to win the, the next two fights here in the next few minutes will win the entire game. Uh, if, if Cloud9 are able to take a fight, they're going to take Kraken, they're going to push this advantage forward. If Reborn are able to rebuff, they will just completely turn this game around. I mean, starting all over, he had the steal earlier on, that was on the gold mine. can he maybe do it again for the Kraken? The vision isn't there right now for Phoenix Reborn, but Wrecked moving up does find that flare. They know this is happening, Hardik on the front line, is he going to get engaged on Joseph, swapping right onto the back line of Reborn, but he's getting chunked so hard hard, has to back away, use that Kaku to buy some time. The damage is not there from Cloud9 right now. They're all in the choke point. Where's the Solar Storm out of starting all over? He can just obliterate Cloud9 right now. Joseph, he wants to jump back in. He finds some good damage. There's the first out of Hardak. He's going to be able to pick up the first kill. Joseph is going so ham right now on the back line. The reflex block. He trades the kill. Wrecked goes down. Cloud9 with an ace. They're going to pick up the Kraken too. Just ridiculous plays on both sides. You see, it looks like Cloud9 almost getting baited into a choke point where Phoenix Reborn really can excel. At the end, Cloud9 coming out on top. Here's our replay. You see them moving forward, but the thing is, Pop holding onto this fountain as long as possible. He knows they can turn it around. Hardik, he's gonna sell heal, run out of here. That's the war treads for his team. The fountain comes out. Joseph's gonna turn it around, starting all over as the target. Focuses, the burst will come out, seals the whole area of the fight. Yes, Joseph dies at the end, but he takes Xenotech down, and that is exactly what he has to do. That was so close. Absolutely insane. Solar Storm coming out there. I think maybe uh, Reborn thinking they could steal the Kraken. Not able to do so. Cloud9 did pick that up during the replay. I tell you, Humanist, their jerseys might be blue and white, but right now Cloud9 are all red. It's been a bloodthirsty game. It, I mean, this is their play style, though, right? You look back to uh, what defined Nemesis. This was a team that was going to dive you if they had the chance, and they have not lost those characteristics here. 
Absolutely not. Now with Kraken pushing towards Reborn's base, they need to mount a defense. You can see Xenotech is starting all over, moving forward a little bit, looking for the poke damage. Can Wrecked find a good force to court? Is the Crucible going to be on point for Toph? These are all the questions we got to pay attention to right now. That is a good force to court. Lands on the hard deck. He does manage to back away, though. Good reflex to get him out of the depths from above. The range on that overdriven Heliogenesis doing so much work, though. Hard deck very low on health. Solo Storm is available. But starting all over, holding on to that just for now. Toph taking some good damage too. Cloud9, as much as their composition is great at skirmishing and team fighting, certainly struggle a little bit when it comes to, to the actual sieging of the base here for Reborn. Yeah, I mean, it's it's partly due to their composition, but look what they're fighting into. They can get pulled <laughs> and quibbled at any moment. The yeah. Helios, this is area of effect damage, area of effect stuns. You're talking, and we, that's not even to mention the death from above to come out of Xenotech. So I think it's really smart that they don't force the fight there. They get this choke point turret, which obviously is a very strong point that Reborn would have liked to, to keep up at that. Yeah, having that choke point turret is so important because unlike many of the other turrets in lane at least, you don't have a path where you can get flanked from behind in the jungle. So it's one of the easier ones to defend. It's always a bad sign when it gets taken down. Reborn though, if they maintain their composure, I maintain the fact that they can actually pull this into a later stage of the game where they are able to win fights. Starting all over, maybe one more item. He's gonna be in a good spot. Xenotech, if he just builds this last lucky strike into something, he's gonna have good damage too. I mean, he already has pretty decent damage. I think as the fights go longer and longer, the breaking point, uh -oh. broken the Ooh. stacks. That was very close. Hardek just walking forward right now, though, nearly gets pulled out by the Polite Company. That's not going to be the Force to Cord, though. Starting all over, can't quite get the damage down. Hardek backing away. He was looking for a verse there, Humanist. He was fishing. <laughs> he was. You know, and I think Hardek has done a very nice job. Of the whole Cloud9 has, while they're applying pressure, it feels like there's a weakness. And the moment they're going to engage, that verse is going to come out. Absolutely. Now Reborn, knowing Hardex chunked out a little bit, move up. They feel a little bit more confident trying to establish a presence on the map, maybe get some vision down. Actually using the Force Cord just to farm. That's that's dire straits. <laughs> that's just work uh, being being done right there. Wrecked, he knows. It's 15 second cooldown. We're not going to fight. Let's just go ahead and grab this and secure a little bit more efficiency out of the map. I like it. I like it too. It was, it was pretty nice. Wrecked, you know, he is one of these really strong roam players in North America. Self-proclaimed as the best, uh, but that remains to be seen, of course. We'll know probably more likely after the end of the championships. Well, I mean, it's confidence or hubris, right? And yeah. as you say, we're going to find out. But as I've been watching him over this whole summer season, I've been incredibly impressed. I think he's one of the most consistent roamers right now in the scene. Absolutely. And Kraken respawning. Cloud9 wants to go for the fight. Xenotech stunned up, rooted in place. It's going to be hard for him to get away here. Easy pickup for Joe. Now the fight's going to keep on going. Force the cord, buying some time for starting all over. He has a lot of broken missed stacks, but is he going to be able to find the Heliogenesis that he needs? Joseph is just back and forth, in and out, dodging all over the place. Core collapse lands, but it's too late. Ace for Cloud9. They might just push in for the win here. Yeah, they're going to push in. They're going to take this and seal game number one. I, I just think a bit, maybe a bit of a positioning error coming out, coming out of Phoenix Reborn, but we talked about Rex's Lance earlier and how he plays it almost better than anyone in the Scene, but that was just textbook out of Lost Boy. It was the impale into the Githian wall. There was nothing Xenotech could do. Cloud9, they came into this tournament in fifth seed after what some would say